Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Human Standard, written by Weird Spectre. 2587 CE. Even weeks after returning to Attorney's Entree, 1428, I was surprised by the thickness of the air in public areas. It had, for want of a better word, it had a weight, humanity, and musk, a feeling of being occupied. I still felt a little offset by the slow rotation, though. The station was built to human standard, like damn near everything else within 700 light years of humanity's borders. And although we built them better, imagine having to build spin drums to simulate gravity, humans built them cheaper and prettier, admittedly. But we evolved with less gravity than them, so the Coriolis forces were a little different on the station to the last one I'd stayed on. I strode briskly through the central passage, the arterial corridor which connected everything on this level, down which ran the various hotels and restaurants and offices of the station. I passed the chairs and tables arrayed before each cafe, needing to see only the style of the logos to recognize which of them was human run. Those occupied a fraction even I found surprising. Yeah, for example, Hersh's traditional, even if it wasn't for the name, just the way the font looked like something printed in a book from centuries ago, despite shifting and evolving on both the hollow above the storefront and on the fabric on the outer barriers. There was enough to tell me which species owned the establishment. Hersh's also happened to be where I was meeting my niece. She was still short by our standards, probably a little shorter than an average male human, I figured. And despite moving with what I might once have said was grace, the biases I picked up from your kind meant that I immediately saw her as blunderingly awkward on her three spindly legs. My vestigial chest limb grasped hers in greeting, and we sat in the faux leather unupholstered seats. So, uncle, about my, uh, business opportunity... She cast a conspiratorial glance at the human at the bar. It's bullcrap, to borrow the human adage. Her eyes, which I saw as too far apart despite being normally space for a Corian, went white. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yes, or I suppose you haven't met a human before today. The station is on the border between this space and the rest of the galaxy, so it is understandable, I suppose. After all, you traveled a long way from home just to get here. So walk me through your decision process here. Why do you want to take the children of these miners? Hazel's expressions flickered, and she shifted in an awkwardly shaped booth. Her vestigial hand twitched, while her two arms spread themselves as wide as they could. Every species in the known galaxy loves their kids. Well, every sensible carbon-based species, anyway, she hesitated. If I had kids, I'd do whatever the captors said, just to make sure that they were safe and sound. No question. Humans don't follow. They lead, Hassel. They don't protect their own by doing the most rational, logical thing. They protect their offspring by deceiving themselves that they can do the impossible to protect them, and then use that as motivation to do the impossible. I reached under the table and felt for the privacy switch. Holographic curtains of light distortion shimmered down near the side of the booth as weak electrostatic force fields scrabbled sound. I pulled out my handheld, which much against convention was in fact a slightly modified human-built hand terminal, because of course it was, and laid it on the beer-soaked, slightly sticky table between us, switching on the projector. A news article shimmered into view above us as a 3D image of a human male clutching a child glittered beside it. She sniffed derisively, hyperbole. I was there, I replied. It was the truth. The guy's name had been Alfie. Some horrible turn of events had happened in one of the spin cylinders orbiting a planet and an apartment building caught in fire. In the process, a child was left inside. I've seen battleships tumble from orbital warfare to flattened cities and watched young lovers cradle the shattered remains of their partners. But nothing compares to seeing a mother come rushing home from work to find her apartment ablaze with a child inside. 
her wail. And Alfie didn't even know her. Plenty of reason to empathize, for sure. But this man sprinted into a building entirely unprotected, navigated through flames and smoke to find the kid, then shielded the child from falling rubble with his own body. For a child he was entirely unrelated to. The conventional wisdom was that humanity had it hardest out of the space-sparing species, a homeworld with a gravity almost too high to enter orbit, their species surviving the evolutionary bottlenecks around the eruption of a supervolcano and coming and going of ice ages, and sharing a planet with venomous critters and pathogens. And don't get me started on Australia. I suspected that explains humanity's unusually strong bond with their children. But I think it was that day in which transmuted my awe of humanity into true respect. Reverence, even. That's novel, you know. Every day, tens of stories like that spread across these mesh nets and broadcasts, at least. And you know what else? They're unstoppable. Not just psychologically, either. Not just like how they brute force their way into every interstellar industry and revolutionized most space warfare within two centuries of first contact. The Koreans had, on first contact four centuries ago, held advantages over humans in every area but AI. Now, we hold only electrostatic pseudo-force fields and access to hyperspace, Though increasingly, I see my own kind using your name for it, Sinclair Space, that are either more advanced than or more easily manufactured than your own versions. In 400 years, and now, with the war, even those gaps are narrowing. Even then, I often wonder if there's something about your Alkabiri drives that makes them superior to hyperspace that we just don't know about. That's why she wanted to kidnap the kids. Miners working for Buckingham Industries, a company undercutting even our species' most competitive corporations, had been steadily pushing into the worlds the family business had unofficially officially claimed. In her head, they'd be a good bargaining chip. I mean, they just don't stop. I called up another article, older, historical actually. A parent watched their child knocked down by a ground car, and in some kind of hormonal maelstrom, they managed to lift the vehicle off them. A ton, a ton and a half of cheap Japanese motor car meant nothing to a human when a child was in danger. Then I called up more articles. And more. What's wrong with these apes? she asked. It's just not small scale either. In the 21st century, some little girls in the country no one had heard of were kidnapped by religious terrorists and forcibly converted to their faith. They started a worldwide social media movement that eventually recovered the children. And, well, have you seen the latest in the Grey Human War? No. The Lotai are old. 64 million orbits. Call that, what, 67 million of your years ago. The Lotai had been a minor subgalactic power. Then, in the midst of the war with... something, your precursors, the first people, swatted them aside like flies. A couple of centuries ago, they came back, and, as you know, consider a number of now-inhabited worlds to be their territory, especially some of the first people land, like Earth. And just how infectious are you human ideas, you ask? Infectious enough that even though, to our eyes, the Lotai don't look grey, we still call them greys, just like everyone else. Give someone or something a nickname, and within any week, everyone in civilized galaxy, from diplomats to scientists to prostitutes, are using it. You are forever in vogue. The Lotai Vanguard was heading towards Sol, the Hope system. And right as they dropped to sublight, wham! Whole system just vanished in a burst of energy that wiped out every low tie starship, not caught in the maelstrom of warped space time. I. I don't understand. I don't think I'd ever seen my niece look so horrified and confused. The humans found and used the first people relic that they'd never tested, didn't understand, and could barely power to, uh, destroy. 
The analysts think uh, to destroy their home star system just to forbid the greys the satisfaction of conquering it. Since then, humanity have been on the front foot in a major way, which itself is madness. Our proudest historical moments as a species was when we retook the home world from the Ashtai aggressors 10,000 years ago. We would never have wiped out an entire star system to deprive the enemy of the pleasure. Humanity have a saying for it, cutting off the nose to spite the face. I paused for a moment. And worse, there's been a friendly contest between the various human factions to give their warships the most ridiculous, insulting names just to further degrade the Lotai they demolish in battle after battle, despite a vast gap in technology. I puffed my cheeks up, thinking... I think the best one I heard was called the HMS Lie Back and Think of England. Or maybe the HMS giving you the ruddy good talking to. It's very human, isn't it? Systematically destroying every offense and then defense. You mount in a war and not even doing you the decency of ensuring that the ship that kills you has a serious name. They're... they're insane. Yeah, no idea. I shook my head. One of your little nuggets of body language that has percolated out into the galaxy. We are insane. Selfish. They care so much about their kids that aren't even their own that if you do this, you'll get yourself killed. They have zero tolerance for people who go after children. Believe me. You want to know the lesson here, kid? As I changed the display to one last hollow, she nodded earnestly. The last image was a human being performing martial arts. It was one of the few videos that I'd felt was important enough to save for my travels. It was the way he moved. The man flowed like water, all while kicking and punching and tripping his opponents. Don't feck with humans, I said. There are lots of things that frighten. No, not frighten. Disquiet me. Lots of things that disquiet me about your kind... But I think that, ignoring your natural grace born of evolution and high gravity and the strength which comes with it, what worries me most about you is your unfailing insistence. You insist that centuries, no, millennia of technological progress can be duplicated by your scientists in decades. You insist that your children are too important for silly things like forces of nature to apply to you if they're in danger. You insist that you're right, that others should listen to you, should be molded into your psychological shape. And the thing is, somehow, by insisting the impossible, you make it possible. You make it true. Whatever my poor niece Hassel has done, please insist she isn't lynched by those miners for her crimes. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click. With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I would just quickly like to give thanks to our tier 5 members. Elithia, Barky, Pudicule, Meridian117, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albarden Gusta, Savage Patch Papa, and Lord Azrakal.